Chapters 11 through 15 of the Book of Deuteronomy from the Holy Bible in Modern English. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Mark Penfold. The Holy Bible in Modern English, translated by Farrar Fenton. The Book of Deuteronomy, chapters 11 through 15. Chapter 11 therefore love your ever-living god and carefully regard him and his institutions and his decrees and his commands for all time and learn them to-day for you are not children who have not known and have not seen the corrections of your ever-living god his greatness and his strong hand and his directing arm and his wonders and the events that he effected in the midst of the mitzorites upon pharaoh king of the mitzoraim and all his country and what he did to the army of the mitzorites to their horsemen and to their chariots how the sea the sea of suf rushed over their heads when they followed after you how the ever-living destroyed them on that day also what he did for you in the desert until you arrived at this spot and what he did to dathan and abiram the sons of eliab the son of reuben how the earth opened her mouth and swallowed them and their homes and their tents and the whole of their supporters slaying them in the centre of all israel for your eyes have seen all the great events that the ever-living has done therefore attend to all the commands that i command you to-day so that you may be hearty and go and seize the country that you are advancing to possess and so that you may lengthen your stay upon the land which the ever-living swore to your fathers to give to them and to their race a land flowing with milk and honey for the country you are going to possess is not like the land of the mitzraim whence you have come where you sowed your seed and watered it on your feet like a vegetable garden but the country you are advancing to is a land of hills and vales and of rain from the skies refreshed with water a land that your ever-living god visits the eyes of your ever-living god are continually upon it from the first of the year until the last of the year so it will happen if you attentively listen to my commands that i command you to-day and love your ever-living god and serve him with all your heart and with all your life that i will give rain upon your land at the season of sprouting and of ripening and you shall harvest your corn and your wine and your oil i will also give herbage upon your fields for your cattle that you may eat and be satisfied but guard yourselves from seducing your hearts and turning to serve other gods and worshipping them for then the anger of the ever-living will burn against you and he will shut the skies and there will be no rain and the land will not give its increase and you will soon perish from upon the beautiful country which the ever-living gave you therefore fix these words upon your hearts and upon your souls and bind them as ornaments upon your hands and let them be as frontlets between your eyes and teach them to your children to talk about in your homes in your families and in your journeys on the road and at your lying down and rising up write them also upon the doors of your house and upon your gates so that you may increase your days and the days of your children upon the ground which the ever-living promised to your fathers to give to them as long as the skies endured over the earth for if you carefully keep all these commands which i command you to practice and love your ever-living god and walk in all his ways and adhere to him then the ever-living will drive all those nations from before you and you shall possess nations greater and stronger than yourself every place that the sole of your foot treads shall be yours from the desert to lebanon from the river the river freight backwards to the sea you shall be your boundaries none shall stand before you you shall terrify and chase them your ever-living god will give all the country to you which you have traveled through as he promised attend i will place before you to-day cursing and blessing the blessing which you have heard in the commands of your ever-living god which i command to you this day and the cursing if you do not listen to the commands of your ever-living god but turn from the path which i command to you this day to walk after other gods whom you have not known so when your ever-living god has brought you to the country that you go to possess you shall place the blessing upon the hill of gerizim and the cursing upon the hill of eyeball 
are they not over the jordan following the path of the declining sun in the land of the canaanites who reside in the west opposite gilgal at the side of the oak wood of morah when you cross the jordan to go to seize the country which your ever-living god will give to you you shall seize it and settle in it but take care to practice the whole of the institutions and the legislation which i have placed before you today chapter twelve which are the institutions and the legislation which you shall carefully practice in the land which the ever-living the god of your fathers will give to you to possess all the time that you live upon the earth you must absolutely destroy all the columns which the nations whom you drive out worship their gods upon the hills and heights and upon the mountains and which they call upon under every shadowy tree you shall also throw down their altars and break their pillars and burn their shrines in fire and smash the images of their gods and destroy their names from the places where they are you shall not do so to your ever-living god for at the place which your ever-living god may choose from any of your tribes to place his name there to fix it you shall go to it and bring there your burnt offerings and sacrifices and your services and the presence of your hands and your vows and the first fruits of your herds and flocks and you shall eat them there before your ever-living god and cheer yourselves in all the success of your hand you and your families when your ever-living god blesses you you shall not offer as we do here to-day all that is right in your own sight for you have not yet arrived at the rest and the inheritance which your ever-living god will give to you but when you pass over the jordan and occupy the country that your ever-living god will divide among you and rest from all your enemies around and dwell securely then to the place where your ever-living god shall choose to fix his name you shall bring all that i have commanded you your burnt offerings and sacrifices your gifts and the presence of your hand and all your free vows that you vow to the ever-living you shall enjoy yourselves there before your ever-living god you and your sons and daughters and men-servants and maid-servants and the levite who is in your village for he has not a share or a state among you you must guard yourselves from offering your burnt offerings in every place you see except in the place which the ever-living may choose in one of your tribes there you shall offer your burnt offerings and there you shall do all that i have commanded you however you may to all the desires of your life sacrifice and eat flesh according to the blessings which your ever-living god has given you in all your villages both the clean and the unclean may eat of them like as of the gazelle and the stag except that they shall not eat the blood that shall be poured upon the ground like water you shall not eat in your villages from the offering of your corn and wine and oil or of the firstlings of your herd or flock or of any vow which you vow as free will offerings or of presents from your hands you shall only eat such in the presence of your ever-living god at the place which your ever-living god chooses to himself you and your son and your daughter and your manservant and maidservant and the levite who is in your village shall enjoy yourselves before your ever-living god in all the prosperity of your hand take care that you do not forget the levite all your time upon the earth for your ever-living god will extend your boundaries as he promised you therefore i tell you to eat flesh wherever you desire to live you may eat flesh in all places you wish to live you may eat flesh for the place where your ever-living god may choose to fix his name may be far from you therefore you may sacrifice from your herd and from your flock that the ever-living gives you as i commanded you and may eat in your villages of all that your life desires but only as the gazelle and the stag are eaten thus the clean and the unclean may eat they may both eat only refrain from eating the blood for the blood is the life and you shall not eat the life with the flesh you shall not eat it you shall pour it upon the earth like water you shall not eat it for it is well to you and to your children after you that you should do right in the sight of the ever-living only what you have consecrated by yourself and your vows you shall take up and bring to the place which the ever-living has chosen and you shall offer your burnt offerings with the flesh and the blood upon the altar of your ever-living god 
for the blood of your sacrifice shall be poured upon the altar of your ever-living god and you shall eat the flesh listen attentively to all these words that i command you so that you may prosper and your children after you forever while you do fair and right in the sight of your ever-living god when your ever-living god has defeated the nations where you are going driving them before you and you possess them and reside in their country guard yourselves from inquiring about them from turning to inquire about their gods and asking how did these nations serve their gods for i would do the same myself you shall not do so with your ever-living god for all the offerings to the ever-living which you take up to offer to your god as well as those of your sons and your daughters shall be burnt with fire to your god chapter thirteen you must carefully practice all the things which i have commanded you you must not add to them nor shall you take away from them when a preacher arises among you or a dreamer of dreams and gives you a proof or an evidence and the proof or the evidence which he has declared to you comes to persuade you to walk after other gods whom you have not known and to serve them listen not to the words of that preacher or to that dreamer of dreams for your ever-living god is trying you to learn if you are lovers of your ever-living god with all your heart and with all soul you must walk after your ever-living god and fear him and keep his commandments and listen to his voice and serve him and adhere to him therefore that preacher or that dreamer of dreams shall be put to death for advising to turn from your ever-living god who brought you from the land of the mitzrayim and freed you from the house of bondage for he would seduce you from the path your ever-living god commanded you to walk in so you must burn the evil from your breast if your brother the son of your mother should seduce you or your son or your daughter or the wife of your bosom or your friend who is like your life should say privately let us go and serve other gods whom you have not known nor your fathers some of the gods of the peoples who are around you close to you or far from you from one boundary of the earth to the other boundary of the earth do not incline to him or listen to them let not your eye feel pity for them and do not grieve or feel compassion for them but kill your hand shall be the first to bring them to death and the hand of all the people after you who shall stone them with stones for they shall die because they sought to seduce you from your ever-living god who brought you from the land of the miserites from the house of bondage then all israel will hear and fear and not continue to practice that sin in your midst if you shall hear that at any city where your ever-living god has granted you to reside it is said there come men sons of belial from our midst and seduced the residents of our city saying let us go and serve other gods whom we know not then you shall inquire and investigate and if the truth of the report is established about that abomination in the midst of you you shall strike the residents in that town with the edge of the sword and devote it with all that are in it and put the cattle to the edge of the sword and collect the whole of the furniture to the middle of its market-place and consume all its furniture completely to your ever-living god and it shall be a ruin for ever it shall not be built again and nothing of the accursed things shall stick to your hands so that the ever-living may turn away from his burning anger and grant you mercies and benefit you and increase you as he promised to your fathers so long as you listen to your ever-living god and keep all his commandments which i command you to-day and do right in the sight of your ever-living god chapter fourteen you are the children of the lord you shall not cut yourselves nor shave your eyebrows for the dead for you are a people consecrated to your ever-living god and the ever-living chose you to be a people separated from all the peoples who are upon the face of the earth you shall eat no filth these are the beasts that you may eat the ox the sheep kind and the goat kind the stag and gazelle and roebuck and chamois and antelope and springbok and bison with all cattle that divide the hoof and chew the cud those animals you may eat but of these who chew the cud you may not eat although they divide the hoof 
the camel and the kangaroo and the rabbit who chew the cud but do not divide the hoof they are unclean to you with the hog although it divides the hoof yet it does not chew it is unclean to you you shall not eat of its flesh or touch its dead body you may eat of these among all that are in the waters all that have fins and scales you may eat but of all that have not fins and scales you may not eat they are unclean to you you may eat every clean bird but you may not eat of these the eagle and the osprey the buzzard and kite with their species and the whole of the raven species and the ostrich and the nighthawk and the seagull and the cormorant with their species with the pelican the snake-eater and the bittern and the vomiter and the eagle vulture and the turkey buzzard with the stork and the snorter with their species and the hoopoe and the bat and all the winged spawners are unclean to you you may not eat them you may eat every clean bird but you may not eat any self-dying carcass give them to the foreigner who resides among you to be eaten or sell to merchants for you are a people consecrated to your ever-living god you shall not boil a kid in its mother's milk you shall tithe the whole of the produce of your grain as it comes from the field year by year and you shall eat of it before your ever-living god in the place that he chooses to fix his name both of your corn and wine and oil and of the blessings of your herd and flock so that you may learn to reverence your ever-living god at all times but if the journey is too long for you to be able to carry it because the place which your ever-living god has chosen to fix his name in is too far from you then you shall bless your ever-living god and convert it into money and take the money in your hand and go to the place that your ever-living god has chosen for himself and expend that money in all that your life requires in oxen and sheep and wine and flesh and in all that your life demands and eat them there before your ever-living god and enjoy yourself with your family but you shall not forget the levite who is in your villages for he has no inheritance and share with you at the end of the third year you shall bring the whole of the tithe of your produce in that year and leave your villages the levite shall also come for he has no share or inheritance with you and the foreigner along with the fatherless and the widow who are in your villages and they shall eat and be satisfied because your ever-living god has blessed you in all the work of your hands which you have done chapter fifteen at the end of seven years there shall be a releasing and this is the kind of releasing every possessor of mortgaged land which his neighbor has mortgaged shall release it he shall have no claim against his neighbor or his brother because it is a release by the ever-living you may have a claim against foreigners but you must release from your hand what belongs to your brothers for nothing for you will not be poor yourself because blessing the ever-living will bless you in the country which your ever-living god will give to you to possess that is if you listen to the voice of your ever-living god and continue to practice the whole of his commandments which i command you to-day for your ever-living god will bless you as he has promised and you shall lend to many nations but you will not borrow and you shall rule over many nations but they shall not rule over you yet there will be poor among you one brother with another in your villages in the country which your ever-living god gives you harden not your heart nor close your hand from your poor brother but open your hand to him and lend according to his necessity what is needful to him guard yourself from saying to your vile heart the seventh year the year of release is near and your eye is cruel to your poor brother and you will not lend to him when he will cry against you to the ever-living and it will be a sin to you lend freely to him and let not your heart grudge against lending but rely upon this fact that your ever-living god will then bless you in all you do and in all sent from your hand for the poor will never be wanting in the breast of the land therefore i have commanded you saying open your hand freely to your distressed brother to your poor in the land when your relative is sold to you a hebrew man or a hebrew woman he shall serve you six years 
but in the seventh year you shall set him free from you but when you set him free from you you shall not send him away destitute you shall reward him liberally from your flock and from your corn and from your wine vat which your ever-living god has blessed you shall give to him and shall remember that you were slaves among the mitzraim and your ever-living god freed you therefore i command this thing today but if it occurs that he says to you i will not go from you for i like you and your house for i have been satisfied with you then you shall take an all and fix him by his ear to your door and he shall always be your servant that is until your death that is how you shall do it shall not be hard in your sight to send him from you into freedom for you shall only purchase your servant by the year for six years then your ever-living god will bless you in all your work every firstborn which your herd or your flock bears remember you must dedicate to your ever-living god you shall not work the firstborn of your cow nor shear the firstborn of your ewe you shall eat them year by year before your ever-living god in the place that the ever-living chooses you and your family but if there be a defect or lameness in it or bareness or any disease you shall not sacrifice it to your ever-living god you must eat it in your villages the clean and the unclean together as you do the gazelle and stag only you must not eat their blood pour it upon the earth like water the end of chapters eleven through fifteen of the book of deuteronomy recording by mark penfold